Hey, it's Gerb Sims, and today I'm going to build a wheelchair accessible tiny home. A lot of my builds lately have been inspired by the new neighborhood descriptions that were recently incorporated into the game, and I adore Bedrock Straight. I love that it's kitschy, I love that it's tacky, and it was exactly where I wanted to put this build, so I jumped right into it. I grabbed Chad, and we got to building. So. When it came to accessibility for this build, there were three major tasks that I had to overcome. The entryways, the kitchen, and the bathroom, and we'll get to each of those accordingly. As a tiny house, parking is going to be important. I didn't want to put in a garage because one, it would take up tile count for our tiny home, and two, it's actually pretty restricting, um, or constricting if you will, of the amount of space that someone has to get in and out of the car. But with a carport, we can really maneuver in and out of the car, in and out of the home, um, keeping accessibility in mind, and also not taking up tiles for the tiny home um, tile count. So. The carport, I ended up redoing so many times, probably like six or seven, because every time I placed those awnings, if I picked them up, I had to re-raise and lower them because the game doesn't want me to have nice things. So uh, I did end up with something that I liked, but it took a really, really long time and a lot of patience. Um, the exterior of this build is meant to be simple and modern because I decided to go with a green theme and like I said, it's gonna be very tacky. And for that reason, I wanted the silhouette to be simple, the silhouette to be easily um, observed and then to add onto it with fun colors and fun accessories. So I am knee deep in trying to figure out how to make green work and I couldn't figure out if I was gonna go bright green, if I was gonna go dark green. So I really just started going for it and playing with textures. The front of the build ended up with a desert texture theme, stone stucco, and then the rear of the build ended up being what I consider to be an add-on, something of an addition that the homeowner uh, came to. So in my theory, in my storytelling, um, the homeowner really wanted more accessible space so they built on the back and I did like that we had the sand of the desert and I wanted to add the sand of the islands and so the textures in the back are more thatching and more woods. So although it's two totally separate styles to totally separate locations of inspiration, I tried to bring them together in the aspect of being kind of wacky. Um, and when you have a wacky build, anything really goes. You can explain away anything by just saying, hey, it, that's how the build is. So it's nice when you're working in that space that you can allow yourself to be creative uh, without following the typical rules that you would otherwise enforce upon yourself. I did a lot of trial and error as far as locations of windows and doors and ultimately I just fell into what I found. There wasn't really a good rhyme or reason. Sometimes if I'm really struggling with windows and doors, I'll start on the interior and then place the windows from there. Um, that's not really something that I find easy. Roofing is actually easier for me, I think, than placing windows and doors because I either place way too many or way too few. I started off in the interior with the bathroom because the second thing that I was finding important for this build was the accessible bathroom. In a tiny home, a lot of our builds have what, like a two by one or a three by two uh, bathroom, which takes up little tile space and that's great. That's not the case with an accessible build. And my experience in working with people with disabilities, which was my career for a very long time, is that accessibility in a Location means nothing if there aren't accessible bathrooms. So it was important to me to start with making sure we had an accessible toilet with handrails, an accessible shower, and then a sink that you could roll up to and wash your hands at. So this took up so much room in the build and I'm really glad I started with it because there's no way that I would have been able to incorporate the bathroom later had I not just initially said this is gonna take up a chunk of the house. I'm really glad I did it that way. The kitchen is kind of a similar mentality. Um, 
You have to play around with the idea of not only height, but also the idea of width when you're making any type of accessibility. So, or I'm sorry, any type of wheelchair accessibility. So all of the doors that I used were the 1.5 tile width um, so that you could, in theory, navigate a wheelchair in and out of them. And that's also important when it comes to building the kitchen is navigating around counters. We can't do a really narrow kitchen and we can't do a really tall kitchen. So things like cabinets are pretty much off, off limits. Um, and that's something I'm considering in the bathroom as well. How can I incorporate storage for this person that is within arm's reach? And that took a lot of mental gymnastics. In the kitchen, what I ended up coming down with was, how can I even use a full-size fridge? Uh, I can't. So it really ended up with me deciding, all right, I think we're gonna have to put a mini fridge in here. And then I thought to myself, I eat a lot. I'm gonna need two mini fridges. So instead of a full-size fridge, instead we have two side-by-side -side mini fridges. Maybe one of them is the freezer, one of them is the refrigerator, whatever helps you figure it out is fine. Um, and then I had to use the counter space accordingly. Theoretically, um, the sim would not use the counter space to prepare any of their food. They would use a, a lower height table that they could access with a wheelchair, which I incorporated later. So instead, the counter space became more of storage space that the sim could access appliances and put things down, but not necessarily to prepare any of their food. So I think it ended up looking okay looking a little bit streamlined like i like i said it's not gonna look exactly the way that the game wants it to because we're making up accessibility it's not something that exists inherently in the game and we have to make up the rules and enforce them ourselves so i did come to some type of kitchen access accessible kitchen you could say it's funky it's funky but you know, it's a kitschy build. Did I mention it's a kitschy build? And anything really goes. So I brought down those paint pots and I kept everything real spaced apart so that you could, in theory, navigate a wheelchair through there. In the living room and the office, that became an entirely other, another meatball altogether. <laughs> meatball, matzo ball, I don't know. How can you find spaces that are defined by, defined without seating? For example, this desk wouldn't have a desk chair, so I need to put all of the implications of a desk without actually putting a desk chair. The living room is going to lack a specific seat, probably the primary seat, because it needs to be wheelchair accessible. And those were questions that I asked myself many times while trying to configure this living room. Configuring this living room was one of the most difficult things. I really wanted the bathroom to stay where it was, but I ended up having to move the bathroom so that I could keep the space, but also not have the door in such an inaccessible area. Not inaccessible, but it kind of had you going right through the living room in order to use the bathroom, which is not how you want to hang out with your friends. Um, so instead, once I was able to move that door, the living room came together much easier. And I was able to leave open a space where someone would put their wheelchair and sit by the fire and look at the TV. So that was a lot easier once I allowed myself to let go of the location of the bathroom. And it ends up being this really sweet space. I imagine a sim knitting in it, a sim hanging out with friends. There's an extra chair in case an additional person comes over, as well as an area for a service dog. Um, they can eat and they can sleep next to the TV, even though every single dog in The Sims is either afraid of the TV or obsessed with it. I, my pets never really cared about the TV, so that's something of Sims logic that I will never understand. So I'm putting a little bit more finishing touches in the living room and in the kitchen, but I'm going to be moving shortly to the bedroom. 
The bedroom was really difficult because I kept on accidentally making it match and the whole point of this build was that everything was mismatched. It was eclectic and the bedroom just had less furniture and so making it clash in a polished way was a challenge to say the least. It came out nicely. Um, I also needed to consider I wouldn't have a full closet because there wouldn't be an arm's reach with hanging clothes um, and so considering how the bedroom was going to turn out took a lot of, again, mental gymnastics. I don't know why, but listen, I was like, this person needs a therapy pool. And how do you get into a therapy pool? A wheelchair lift. So I ended up making a lift to go into the pool. Um, and I used a whole bunch of debug objects and used tool and other ways to orient the object so that it looked natural and not like a video camera, which is what it is. And I think it ended up looking cute. We made some changes to it later. And when I started this build, I can't tell you why, but this, what is this, this debug grass patch? I'm obsessed with it in the desert. I think it's so funny to have someone plant a patch of grass in their desert yard and then put like a lawn chair on it. I just think that that is exactly what the neighborhood description is asking for and I had to fulfill that. So I kept on adding more and more clutter almost to this. It almost became like a, a diorama of sorts. It, it was a scene because this person wouldn't use the lawn chair, but it was it was a scene that represented this build for some reason and I got really into it. I couldn't tell you why. Um, the outdoor spaces were very, very important for this build because there was no dining room space inside. Um, I really wish that we had better one by one dining room tables, but that's another story for another video. Um, this area outside now serves as the dining room, the therapy pool, as well as just some fun space to relax. I put a lot of twinkly lights outside and I really wanted outside to be fun and funky and a place that you wanted to spend time because although the inside is really nice uh, it can be kind of cramped in a tiny home and here I'm including what I would consider to be a car that could be uh, handicap accessible and I actually just really like the car with the build so I'm so glad we got those debug cars I was really sick of just sizing up really potato lumpy cars before now and so finally here is the final exterior but before i show you the interior i have to play test this no you cannot have service dogs or wheelchairs in the sims but that's what modders and cc creators are for so i used these three different cc and mods one is a wheelchair that functions as a chair one is service dog poses with a wheelchair and the last being the actual rideable wheelchair which is so interesting to see because it's a bike so here is the sim navigating through the space in a wheelchair and this was awesome because i was able to see that i allowed for enough space for a wheelchair to clear the areas to get into and out of the different rooms and that was nice because i didn't have to touch up anything or make any other spaces i never play test my builds but this one seemed necessary and you can see that the sim just fits so well in this space i think it ended up really sweet and just just really funky and really what I wanted it to look like and I made a sim and I put her in there and guys she's happy she loves it and I hope that you love it too I really enjoyed this build and I really enjoyed recording this speed build it's my first one and I just really hope you like it and this build is available in the gallery search hashtag gerb sims find me on all of the social medias hashtag gerb sims if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and if you can't get enough come over to my twitch channel I stream four days a week Sundays Tuesdays Wednesdays and Fridays and I would love to see you there so thank you again I hope you have a great rest of your day night morning whatever time it is and until next time live your best life and be your best self. Bye!